Welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report and I'm Antonio. Before we begin today's episode, I wanted to take a moment to address a tragic event that has deeply affected the community of South Poles, but also affected any of us or all of us who have heard the news. Recently, a devastating incident took place during a children's dance class where two innocent children lost their lives and nine others were injured in a senseless attack. A 17-year-old has been arrested following this absolutely abhorrent crime. To the families who have lost their beloved children, we send you our deepest and most heartfelt condolences. I cannot begin to imagine the pain and heartache you are experiencing right now. The loss of a child is something no parent should ever have to endure. And our hearts break for you. To those who were injured and their families, we send your sincere wishes for a swift and full recovery. I hope you find strength and comfort in each other during this incredibly difficult time. This tragic event is a stark reminder of senseless violence that can occur in our world and how suddenly and inexplicably our lives can be shattered. There are some things in life we will never be able to explain. And this is one of them. It is in times like these that we must hold our loved ones ever so close and tell them how much we love them. To the community of South Forth, please know that our thoughts, our prayers for healing are with you all. having to say those words you know everything else just seems rather silly now um, but sometimes we need something silly to give us some comfort um, so thank you for being here and I know it's been a couple of days since I've been able to uh, upload anything I, this episode has been so challenging to actually get uploaded. I, this is the fifth version of it. And hopefully I'm crossing my fingers that um, YouTube will accept it. It kept getting copyright infringement stuff and I kept redoing it and redoing it and redoing it. And as I said, this is the fifth one, crossing my fingers. I also, the last couple, couple of days, especially the last two days, I've been in excruciating pain because of my knee. I don't recall or remember if I told you folks, but I've had a knee injury for a while. And ever so often it, it acts up. And the last week or so, it's been acting up like I can't, I'm, I can't walk or I can't step on it too much. It, it's, it's like a pinched nerve and even if I sit for too long when I try to get up I can't you know put any weight at all on 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 that leg so 
anyways, today I, I was able to see the physiotherapist and um, he basically said my meniscus and, and ligament, something, it's all torn. Um, so I will be in pain for a while. Um, I mean, I'm kind of trying to smile and laugh it off a little bit, but it's not funny at all. But, um, yeah, so trying to kind of think and, and do stuff at the same time while, you know, this, this, this pain, um, I found it a little bit challenging, but, um, I got it done. And if you're watching this right now, then that's great to YouTube <laughs> accepted the video, um, after all. So thank you. Sir online with a story you wrote about an interview with a certain Meghan Markle. Yes, I mean this um, relates back to the the first time we sort of got to know Meghan was the engagement interview um, in 2017 and it was conducted by Michelle Hussain who's a very serious um, news presenter in Britain. It was very interesting, it gave an insight into their relationship. And um, I think we were all very happy, weren't we? We, we loved them for it. Yeah, I think those interviews are always sort of exciting because it's you can tell the couple are really um, thrilled to have got yeah. engaged and it, it's meant to be a very happy interview. But in their Netflix series, Harry and Meghan, um, Meghan gave a very new perspective on it, a very negative one. She said that she felt it was orchestrated, um, you know, it was a reality show and the whole thing that had sort of been staged. But what's happened this week is that Michelle Hussain, who's... She's a very calm kind of character and doesn't usually... Well, she's um, one of our prestige journalists, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. She, she's certainly not someone who's kind of looking for headlines. Yeah. But she's written an article for a magazine in which she, she says she was 
clearly astonished by Megan's comments um, because you know it wasn't staged at all, um, and it was she felt that um, you know if anything, Harry and Megan very much had you know lines prepared. They knew what they wanted to say, and she thought that came across. So it's well, a very. I mean, and that's that's only smart, right? That's like you know you know you go to an interview planning what you're going to say. Exactly. I mean, I've written a piece for for Mel Plus that our viewers can can read, and that. In your engagement interview, um, you <laughs> orchestrated reality show, yeah. You mean just like prepping you before they're going to ask you this, 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 or how does that work? Yeah, but also like, and you know, and then there'll be a moment where they'll want to see the rings or show the ring. The main stone itself, um, I saw. But it was, you know, rehearsed. So we did the thing out with the press, and then we went right inside, took the coat off, sat down, and did the interview. So it was all in that same moment. But yes, we weren't, so my point is we weren't allowed to tell our story because they didn't want. We've never been allowed to tell our story. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. the consistency. That, that is consistent. So there must be a reason why this um, episode has been so problematic. Problematic, sorry. Um, this is my fourth attempt um, that I'm redoing it. So um, what I already had done, I just uh, changed a few things at the end of it, and I went to upload it um, at 11 a.m. today, Sunday, presently, right now. And it just kept going, going, going. About half an hour, it's still checking, checking, checking. Then it's like, no, nope, you have copyright infringement stuff. It, it, it will not be seen. So I took it and I thought, okay, it's the videos that I have. So I took it, I redid it. I tried to upload it again at one o'clock. Nope, same thing. I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, I stripped everything. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm going to do a completely new sort of format. Um, telling the same story, but but different, like not, but anyways, I can't speak. I, I, I finished that at around 3.30. I'm going to try to upload it. Bang, nothing. So I was like, okay, I, I give up. I give up. <laughs> it's not meant to go up. So right now, what time is it now? It's like 9, 9.30 p.m. on Sunday. I'm going to try and redo everything again. And let's see how it works. So this is part of my, my thing. So you know why it, it may come out late or why you may get it tomorrow or it may be completely different than what I had originally. Okay, so with that said, we I'm setting this up so you know. Um, you've you've heard what um, Maureen, aka Ricardo, Richard, whatever, um, has said, and you've heard what Megan and Harry have said in their um, uh, twenty twenty two docu series on net on Netflix in regards to the subject. Now I was looking for Michelle um, Hussein's article and it's actually published in Saga magazine, but the entire article is behind a paywall um, and I'm not willing to pay for, off for it. So I kept looking and I found um, what she actually said or the quotes of what she said in um, Deadline magazine. So what I'll do, I will read the entire deadline um, magazine and um, we will go from there. I want you to have all three sort of sources that are involved or, or, or the, 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 <laughs> the plaintiffs involved or whatever. So we have accurate information. All right. Okay. Here we are. The title of the deadline article is Meghan Markle's remarks about orchestrated reality show engagement interview baffle BBC presenter Michelle Hussein. And this is written by Jack Cantor. BBC, sorry, the BBC presenter who conducted an engagement interview with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry has said 
she was left perplexed after the Duchess of Sussex described it as an orchestrated reality show. Michelle Hussein, one of the BBC's most respected news anchors, said she was unsure what to make of Markle's remarks, which the former suit star made on her Netflix documentary series 20 in 2022. The 2017 interview was organized by Kensington Palace and Hussein asking the couple about their relationship before their dramatic split from the UK royal family. Reflecting on the exchange in the bombshell Harry and Meghan Netflix documentary, Markle said it was staged. It was, you know, rehearsed, she said. So we did the thing out with the press and then we went right inside, took the coat off, sat down and did the interview. So it was all in that same moment. Hussein appears to disagree. In comments published this week, she told Saga magazine, when the Duchess of Sussex said that my engagement interview with her and Harry was an orchestrated reality show, I didn't know what to make of it. They seemed to have thought through what their life, their new life would be like and what marriage would mean for her life in particular, Hussein added. There was nothing that pointed to what would happen. It was two people who were full of joy in each other and life. It is not this it is not the first time Hussein has commented on the exchange. Soon after Harry and Meghan streamed on Netflix, she was asked about the allegations by co-presenter Justin Webb live on BBC Radio 4. In quotations, we know recollections may vary on this particular subject, but my recollection is definitely very much. Asked to do an interview and I said and and do said interview Hussein said okay so now we've got you know all three factors in this um, smear campaign again so conducting an interview um, with a royal couple or any of the royals it would involve meticulous planning, coordination, and adherence to protocol. Um, so here, here is here is what I'll outline: um, detailed step by step process, basically. So we start out with the preparation um, phase, right? Initial contact and proposal from the royal house. You would get the communication secretary of the royal couple would contact a reputable media outlet such as the BBC expressing the couple's desire to make an announcement. Alternatively, the media outlet might approach the royal household with a proposal for an exclusive interview. The BBC then, the head of news or senior producer receives the proposal they discuss potential angles, questions, and format um, internally before responding. Two, so the formal agreement. So from the royal household, the communication secretary and legal advisors review the final terms of the interview. Key aspects including confidentiality, question, um, question and topics, location, and broadcast rights. From the BBC now, senior producers and legal teams uh, negotiate the agreement, ensuring journalistic integrity and adherence to broadcast standards. Once terms are agreed upon, both parties sign a formal contract. We go into the planning um, phase now, and log um, logistics and, and scheduling. So from the Royal Household, the royal couple's private secretary 
um, or secretaries or the communication person would coordinate their schedule to determine a, 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 a to, to determine an appropriate date and time. The preferred location is identified. Often, it's a, it's in the royal residence. From the BBC side, the producer assigns a high-profile presenter or journalist for the interview. Or if the couple has requested a certain person, then they would assign that that person. Um, a production team is assembled, including the director, camera operators, sound engineers, and lighting te technicians. Equipment and technical needs are assessed and planned. Then we get into the content development. Um, and from the royal household, the communications secretary would provide background information and suggest topics or areas to avoid. Um, they may prepare the royal couple with potential questions and rehearse responses. From the BBC side, the assigned journalist would do some research extensively on the couple, their recent activities, and the nature of the announcement. Questions are drafted and reviewed by editorial teams to ensure they are respectful yet probing if that's what they need, right? So now we have the um, pre-interview coordination, um, rehearsals and technical setup. From the royal household, security protocol are reviewed and enhanced for the interview day. A designated room is prepared, ensuring it is suitable for filming with appropriate decor and lighting. On the BBC side, the production team conducts a site visit to the royal residence to plan the technical setup. Rehearsal are, con are, are conducted without the royal couple or they may do it with the royal couple to test the camera angles, sound and lighting. Then we get into the final briefing. From the royal house, um, the communication secretary provides the couple with a final briefing, emphasizing key messages and reminders. On the BBC side, the journalist and production team hold a final meeting to review the interview structure and technical details. Now, day of the interview, you have the setup, arrival. On the Royal Household side, security and hospitality teams are coordinated to welcome the BBC crew and ensure all protocols are followed. The Royal couple receives a final touch up and personal aids or stylists or anything like that and they get the they final um, debrief from the secretary of communication or from one of their aides whomever is in charge and on the bbc side the production team arrives hopefully early <laughs> just to set up their equipment conduct final technical checks and ensure everything is in place right then we get they conduct the interview so the communication secretary or the senior aide is present to facilitate the interview and address any immediate concerns. Security remains um, discreetly present to ensure the couple's safety, of course. The, journa the journalist conduct the, the, conducts the interview following the prepared questions while allowing for natural conversation flow, right? The production team ensures high quality recording and all that kind of stuff. Then um, post interview phase is basically they would take the tape back, review and get approval. And on the side of the Royal House, um, the communication secretary reviews the raw footage and collaborates with the BBC on any necessary edits, maintaining the agreed upon terms on the BBC side. Um, editors work on the footage, creating a polished final product. They might prepare different versions for various platforms, TV, online, phone, that kind of stuff. The final cut is sent to the Royal House for approval. And um, if, stip if, if, stip stip if stipulated in the agreement, if in the, come on, in <laughs> in the agreement um and then you know the the bbc would do their their promotion and so on um so, so there is there is good attendance um in regards to making sure they get the good slot 
So that, that's how it usually would, would, would go. Now, of everything I said, if, if you, anything has remained, right? When does Megan and Harry, the subjects that are being interviewed, and when does the journalist, the person who's doing the interview, when do they sit down and organize anything? It's a serious question. Don't laugh at me. It's a serious question, folks. When did they sit down to organize anything? I, I, thank you. They didn't. They didn't. So this entire thing, the entire organization of how this interview is going to be conducted, where, how, and all that kind of stuff is being managed and coordinated with the 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 royal house communication person or persons or 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 aid with the management production um, people at the BBC. Once all of that is coordinated and completed and done, and they have agreed this is the format is how it's going to get done, then the interviewer. Right, the journalist is brought in with the team, and then the senior um, TV producer, director, whomever was okay. Here's what we're doing. This is the format. This is going to be conducted. Blah blah blah. Here are some questions they want you to avoid. Blah blah blah. And it's and 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 that's it. Right now, on Harry and Megan's side. Now remember, Megan has done these things before, and Harry has done interviews also, right? He's done interviews, he knows what it is like to be on a TV um, um, set. So I am I look, I'm I, I'm not I wasn't there, but I'm gonna take the liberty to make some assumptions based on what we read in Spare, based on what we have gotten from the interviews that um megan and harry have have um given i'm going to say that at this point even though megan is in that industry right the film industry tv and all of that that at this point she's probably just i'm not gonna say a word because there's already the media and the press saying because they had already started saying the things that they were saying, right? She needs to be very careful also because she's not quite sure. Am I, 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 better, I have to make sure I'm not, you know, all these new protocols, all the stuff that needs to follow. I'm just going to let them do their thing. And they're just going to tell me like what to do, I guess, or, or whatever, right? Now, the way Harry and Megan talk about this it doesn't seem that they were completely consulted, right? This was just a templated sort of thing. This is what we do when we have these announcements. We bring it in because, you know, they did the same thing with Kate and, and William. And I think William, do, though, did request to have ITV um, and have, um, what's his name? No, I think it, um, Tom, to do their interview. So... The couple has nothing to do in regards to the decision making. And let me remind us a little bit here. Let's 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 go back to that time and moment and let's start to really focus on context, environment, and what we know. So what we know is that thus far, excuse me. Thus far, Harry knows the life of a royal. Harry knows the life of when the communication secretary or the aide of whomever comes to him and say on Thursday, there is a ABC WXYZ charity and you're going with um, William and, 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 and Kate. Here is the suit you're going to wear, and the charity is for saving frogs, 
right? So he's, he does what he's told. He's, he doesn't get involved. He just, okay, um, your Royal Highness, please stand over there. Thank you very much. He's, he just does what he is told. That is why he was so happy and felt at home to actually leave the royal palace and go in the military. He had more freedom. He had more say, in some sense, believe it or not, in, 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 in his own sort of things that he did. I mean, within limitation, I mean, you, he's, he's still in the military, right? He, you can't just go haywire and do whatever you want to do. There are rules and regulations still. But what I'm trying to get at, though, <coughs> excuse me, is at this point, he just follows what he's told to do. And that is not a criticism on, on, on Prince Harry or anything like that. That's just the way it was, Right. So Megan, who who's have experience in this stuff, I could see like the two of them chatting and her going, this is starting to feel very kind of like, you know, reality show-ish. Like we have to go here, do this, and then they give it, okay, don't talk like that, don't bring up this, make sure your your the ring is facing forward, and then at a, when they before they ask the question, you're supposed to hold my hands. Yes, there's some debriefs in interviews and stuff, but I'm imagining this debrief in general made Megan, who has been in the entertainment industry, compare it to a reality show. That's how it felt like, a reality show. Now, this, this, this moron, because that's what I'm going to say, this moron this person that has noodle for for spine, right? He uses all these sort of, and I love how they do it though. It's it's very clever, and this is why, you know, having media training and and understanding how it works in communication is so vital and so important. Because, again, honesty, if I didn't know what I know, I could listen to them and, and they see, because they seem pretty reasonable and logic. Why would I think they're lying? Because they do this thing where they, where they, they give you one where it's like, yeah, we're going to tell you something mean about this person. And then one of them, as, as you might have noticed, and the host go, oh, but that's a good thing, right? Like she, you know, having in questions prepared and stuff, like we would want, it's a good thing. So it seems like, oh, they're on her side, right? And then he comes in and go, well, yes, of course, that would be a good thing. But this is Megan we're talking about, the bully we're talking about. Oh, yes, well, forgive me. So as a spectator, as a person watching the show, what else am I to believe? Because if I can decipher the language that they use and how they use it, listen to Richard Ricardo over there when he was referring to the journalist. He said, she has no need for headlines. Implying Megan is the one that is, is, and then he goes, you know, she's very calm. Megan isn't calm. They're making a comparison because you don't know. I'm not saying you, who's listening. I'm saying you, the spectator, you, you don't realize these things. But that's seeping into your cranius subconsciously. It's very clever what they do. I mean, evil as heck but very clever because it's all mental manipulation using certain words and, and, and reacting a certain way to make you believe because even when, um, this, the, the sun, the, the, the show that the sun has on YouTube and a Royal something, something, 
And the host ever so often, he will say, like I think two weeks ago, he said, you know, I, I feel bad. Like, you know, it seems like everyone just comes down on, on Harry and Megan, you know, he goes, you know, they've, they've, they've been so quiet these last things. I don't think, you know, I think they've finally learned that they should keep their mouth shut. And I just feel bad, especially like, you know, when it comes to Invictus and it's a good thing that Harry has done. And then whoever, you know, he is interviewing that is going to give us the bombshell thing that Harry and Megan are separated and she has an alien lover and he has a, a, a lover from Antarctica or whatever crap they come up with. Right? So they give you like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you see them? They're being nice to them. They're being nice to them. And then, you know, the 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 one with the big news, then he comes in for the juggler. Now, the disappointing thing for me is the journalist. The disappointing thing for me is Michelle Hussein. Born in the UK, immigrant parents from Pakistan. I cannot imagine, even though I've, I've seen and watched people of color, when I say people of color, I, I do mean people of color, like um, someone who had Indian heritage, um, someone who was from the Middle East or something, that sort, on television, specifically one time on Loose Women, say that they'd never, never experienced racism or they don't know what racism is. Now, I can understand that. Maybe you 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 are so blind to it that you choose not to see it or, or or pretend it doesn't exist or you have been so sheltered and you've been lucky right for michelle who is very light skin i i i, I want to say I, i'm and 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 female i'm sure to get where she's at, this being, she's worked very hard. You know, there might have been some struggle here or there. So, and understanding the way tabloids work, I would expect something better from her. Also, when the people you are accusing of something because you're baffled why, why she would say that, First thing I would check and say, well, is she in insinuating I or we did something? I've, I've listened to that, that interview and that quote, you know, a couple of times. There's no insinuation about the BBC and no insinuation about her. So then I would check that off and go, but it's not, the insinuation is not about me. Nowhere did they mention her and say, she did this or the BBC did this. What I did hear them say is that they didn't want they didn't want to allow us to tell our story. Like Megan said to us, she goes, I just wanted to tell our story. But they didn't allow us to tell our story. Why? Because the palace, the secretary in charge of communication, most likely debriefed them, took them to do the rehearsals, walked them there, walked them here, sat them there and said, here's what's going to get done. Right? Maybe Megan, maybe Harry said, hey, um, would it be possible? Because we, we were thinking of this and what does this like? He goes, no, 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 your Royal Highness, sorry. Um, it's we, this is the way it's done. We, we, have the, we have to follow the template that we've got. I, I'm very sorry, your Royal, your Royal Highness. Right? And Megan is going, well, why, why can't we just tell our story? Why do we have to say the way they want us to say it? And I'm not going to say Harry said this, but Harry could have said, well, this is the way it's done. Like, you know, there's, there's protocols and stuff, and I'm not sure, like, this is the first time I'm getting engaged. You know, I don't do engagement interviews every day. So for them to now try at these tabloids, 
to rehash this again because when the Oprah interview, sorry, when when the uh, docu series came out, the Daily Fail had every single day, like how to debunk everything that they were they were saying. So this this particular issue came up back then also in 2022. And guess how they debunked it? Guess how they decided that Meghan Markle was a liar? And she was lying and she's trying to re rewrite history. They said, we contacted the palace and a well, a well, um, not located, a well, what, I, the word is not coming to my head, but as a source, a, a well-placed source a well-placed source source told us that that's not how it happened that that's completely fabricated that what happened was something else as a matter of fact we did everything to accommodate megan everything you know she wanted a fur jacket she wanted helicopters she wanted to have peonies flowers the petals just just falling from the sky she wanted doves to, 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 to be freed at a particular time. And she also wanted to be elevated into the cloud. But the only person who can get that treatment is our future queen. The Princess of Wales. Right? Do we, do, do we see how absurd all of this is? How idiotic and stupid all of this is? But the reason why... I picked this up because I knew about this a couple of weeks, not a couple of weeks, but, but like five days or so ago, like last week. And I thought, ah, pish posh, not important. It's so much time has passed. They're just, they're just trying to rehash something. 24 hours later, it's all over UK um, tabloid press. I'm like, okay, well, tabloids will do what tabloids do. Within 48 hours, international press is picking it up. And I went, oh, okay, all right. So I, I, I need to just, I, 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 you know, Baron said, as he always does, very, very important things. Um, Baron, um, Royal Sussex. If you're not a subscriber, please go and subscribe to Baron's um, channel. He is absolutely amazing. Um, he said, it's important that we do what we do because there needs to be historical markers, right? Uh, he didn't say markers, but I'm just sort of paraphrasing. Because let's say, for example, with Diana, Princess Diana. Princess Diana didn't have a squ you know, squatty squad. Princess Diana didn't have, even though people empathized and, and, and wanted to support her and all that kind of stuff and loved her, social media didn't exist. So all of this stuff she was going through by herself. And when she said anything, when she wanted to talk about, you know, eating disorder and so on, the, the, the tablet press just piled on more and more and more and more. She, she, she couldn't, she, there wasn't a way to, to really and truly fight them. But now in the democrat democratization of, of 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 social media we're able to say hey, hey no no not on our watch not on our watch we are going to show where half of what you're saying actually the entire thing of what you're saying is shite complete shite excrement my friend you know we know that those pigs over there like to you know roll around in manure and 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 mud and 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 eat feast and all that kind of stuff go ahead and do that but don't get us involved in it and don't get our princess and our prince involved in it don't get the Sussexes involved in it and stop the lion stop the lion the disappointment though as much as Michelle says that she doesn't want to be the headline, doesn't want to be the news, is how she responded to it. 
Because you see, she used this tactic where she was kind of neutral enough, but she left it open-ended and put it over as if Megan should really respond now. But I don't know what the Duchess meant. I'm just confused. Like, what does she mean? Oh, by the way, recollections may differ. I was told to go to an interview of an engagement. I went, I did an interview of an engagement, and I did what I was supposed to do. So recollections may differ. Listen, my dear, I think, hope, that you didn't get where you are at for being stupid or being an idiot or being a person who, who was born, bred, and, and, and raised in the United Kingdom does not understand what Meghan and Harry were saying. But I find it very convenient, though, that also Misha was promoting a book or wrote a book or something like that. I'm not saying this is all intentional. I'm just saying, though, it's curious. It's interesting that this issue now has, I don't know, like it's, it's surfaced after so many years. I said this before. I said, I'm starting to think that anyone who writes a book they just need to put the name Meghan Markle anywhere in the book. It doesn't even need to make sense. Just say you're writing a book about, I don't know, there's Martians on Jupiter. And in the sentence, that as you open, you know, your opening line for the book is, on a rainy day where the stars were not the stars, Meghan Markle. I found a place far, far, far away. And I'm telling you, the next day, it will be all over the UK press. It will be all over the, ne the two, two days next around the world. Book about Jupiter and Martians living in Jupiter. Um, has Meghan Markle involved in the trading of Martians? So I have a brilliant idea, and I need everyone to support this idea, okay? <laughs> Here's my brilliant idea. I'm going to publish a book. It's going to be 100 pages. On the 50th page, okay? On the 50th page, it will read, Megan Markle. That's it. In the center of the 50th page, Meghan Markle. All the other pages are going to be blank. All the other pages are going to be blank. We're going to sell the book. How much should we charge? Uh, $35.99. But if you're in the UK, it's £35.99. If you're in Europe, €35.99. Euros. So it's it remember it's an experiment we're doing here okay and we will say that the book is for you to imagine your story and write fill out the blank pages in regards to <laughs> your life <laughs> so ridiculous I am your life in reference to Meghan Markle's life it's it's art it's poetry right listen I think it's a great idea it might work I mean we'll give all the money to charity after like, you know, I buy like a home and, and, and I don't, what if I get a car? I don't really feel like driving sometimes. So get a car with a chauffeur, sounds good. Uh, better yet, maybe I'll go to Bel Air 
and just buy a nice little home in Bel Air, right? Have a, 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 a penthouse in Manhattan. No, no. <laughs> you folks are going, Antonio, stop now. Please stop. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is what the, the imperialist genius event that the English pull off that makes them the, the greatest empire the world had seen. India was one of the world's largest cotton producers. The big cotton producers were the, were the United States, right? The, the US South, Egypt, India. That was where most of the world's cotton was being generated. So the British end up conquering India. They've got access to that cotton. Indians made their own clothing out of that cotton. So the English ban India from making its own clothing. And then they make factories in England that make that cotton clothing. And then they sell traditional Indian clothing to India. They were making traditional Indian clothing in England and then selling it to the Indians after banning the Indians from producing their own clothing. So this is. And that's how they became an empire and was an empire for a long time, I guess. Man. Um, okay, quick announcement to make. I am trying to be a bit more intentional and a little bit more predictable. So I am going to um, post uh, episodes on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Okay, so Tuesday, Thursday. <laughs> My brain just shut down there for a second. So Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays, and Sunday, I'll still post um, um, for your soul. So that one is like, I'd consider it Sunday, the, 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 the bonus one. Okay. So I, if you recall a little while back, I did a sort of quarterly review for the channel and I wanted to test some things out and try some other stuff. So I've, I've, I've done that. And, um, I've been looking also at the, how the channel has been performing and that kind of things. Now, let me, let me, you know, I've said this a, 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 a few times and I'll say it again. For me, if there's, there was only one person, right, listening or watching and, and having an interaction with that person and having a discussion, I would be more than happy, right? But also, I want to see the channel do well and I want to see it um, grow. I want the message of it to to expand and for more people to, you know, hear the other narrative of Megan and Harry. And, you know, so as any person who wants what they do succeed and expand, I, I know, I, you know, the kind of work that I put into the channel and I am sort of embarrassed about the retention um, in regards to content. I will share it with you folks. I just want, I want to be completely tra transparent. So um, to, to, to create a sort of 30 minute or, or 45 or 60 minute podcast, for, for me, it takes me like a day and a half, sometimes two days. Um, because of research that I usually do, because when I say things, I want to make sure that I, I have the backing of where, where it's verified that this is true and that I know what I'm saying. And when there are things that I'm not sure about, I actually go try and learn it and, um, watch tons of videos, read and so on. So it takes time and the way I like, like, I'll give you an example. I spent like close to 15 minutes staring at three images, trying to decide which one would be better. <laughs> so, so it does take me a while and I need to manage my time better in regards to how I, how I execute that. Um, so with, with better intention and, and you folks knowing that, you know, I'm going to be on or posting 
on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday at 1 p.m. or 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If I'm not able to post on the specific date, I will put an announcement in the community tab, okay? And um, so the, the worrying thing for me a little bit is that the average amount of time that folks are spending on the content I'm so embarrassed, man. I'm embarrassed to say it, but uh, okay, I'm going to say it. Um, five to six minutes. So for a podcast that is 30 minutes or 40 or 60, 60 minutes, when your average, average of people actually interested in what you're saying or doing or anything is five minutes, that tells me that I am either not bringing the content that is um, appropriate or you, you, you don't like the content or I'm showing up too late with the content because you've heard it somewhere else uh, already. Because, you know, we, we talk about the same things and similar stuff, just we put different perspectives on it. Um, and that I am I'm failing in, in, in nighting your 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 imagination or your you know um i'm not being able to retain your attention in how i'm doing this stuff so hopefully um with majesty sussex report 2.0 um and given it intentional timing and schedule that may help a little bit i hope it does i love what I do here, I, I, I love this community. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you a gazillion for your support, for your love, for your care. We're not, we're heading into our first year and listen, this is incredible. The things we've actually done, right? I just want to also make sure that I am not investing my time in things you folks don't want to watch or don't care about. Um, I would, be very happy to invest my time in things that you care about so we can actually have solid great conversations about it um so that's it that's the announcement to my to my beautiful wonderful members thank you so much for your support for your counsel for your advice i thank you i thank you i thank you and for any one of you who want to become members come on board and um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. If you have, please put your announce your notification on so you know when we are um, when we've uploaded anything. So this is it. This is it, folks. Next is last word. When it comes to royal interviews, the truth can be as elusive as a crown jewel. The recent controversy, if that's what we want to call it, surrounding Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's 2017 engagement interview has brought this into sharp focus, with three distinctive narratives emerging. First, we have Richard, the tabloid royal expert, who never misses a chance to stir up the pot. He claims Megan's description of the interview as an orchestrated reality show is an attack on the BBC and on the interviewer, Michelle Hussein. But is Richard missing the forest for the trees? Let's turn to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Megan. Their actual words from their Netflix series. They described feeling like they were in a rehearsed situation, but their criticism was aimed at the palace communication team, not the BBC or Hussein. They spoke of being prepped on what to say and how to act, painting a picture of an event stage managed by royal handlers. Finally, we have Michelle Hussein perspective. The respected BBC journalist expressed surprise 
at Megan's characterization, stating that the couple seemed genuinely happy and well prepared. Hussein also stated that recollections may differ and she was just there to do an interview and that's what she did. So what's really going on here? You see, it's crucial to understand the complex dance between the royals, the media, and the palace machine. Traditionally, royal interviews are carefully orchestrated affairs involving senior communications personnel from both the palace and the media outlet. This isn't necessarily something highly nefarious happening. It's about managing public perception and for them maintaining the dignity of monarchy. However, Harry and Meghan's comment suggest they felt constrained by this system unable to tell their story authentically. This tension between royal protocol and personal expression has been and will be an occurring theme, especially as the next generations of royals start to engage and start to be working royals. It is also worth noting how easily misinformation can spread. Richard's interpretation which conflates criticism of palace procedures with a with 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 an attack on the BBC demonstrates how narratives can be twisted to fit pre-existing bias. In the end, this so-called controversy highlights the change in nature of royal communications in the 21st century as younger royals seek more control over their narratives traditional protocols are being challenged and they should be the question remains can the monarchy adapt to these changing expectations while maintaining some mystique and can the tabloid press ever tell the truth Thank you.